Hi, I'm Kurt Fern, the Paralympian, and I'm coming to you from a wobble country. And I'm Paralympian Sarah Rose. I'm broadcasting from Guy country. This is you, Little River, the place where we celebrate all things para sport. And Sarah, welcome, three-time Paralympian, a bronze medalist, star in the pool. Welcome to your first ever, you, Little River. Thank you so much. So excited and honoured to be here. You joined the Paralympic movement in 2004, your first Paralympic Games where you got a bronze. You would make it to the next two after that, Beijing and London. Um, How have you seen the sport change over your time? Um, I've really seen a change in um, the commercial side of things. We're seeing now um, the Paralympics being broadcasted on major networks like Seven, a lot more talk about um, sport, of um, disability rights and a whole range of things. So I think that um, definitely the commercial side on TV and also disability awareness, we're seeing more of that and we can't be pushed to the side anymore. Um, Paralympians are standing up and fighting and, yeah, I think it's great that um, we're constantly spoken about um, elite sports. We're getting better and better and, um, yeah, I think the movement's going from strength to strength. What about your transition out of sport? Now we're seeing you on ABC quite frequently, which is amazing. How have you found the transition into everyday civilian life? Um, I found it kind of tough because I love that feeling of feeling so fit. I really miss that. I'm so unfit now. Um, got two kids that I'm running around like crazy after, but I still feel so unfit. But I love that. I really love um, being on the ABC um, and talking about um, sport, Paralympians, the disability movement, um, what we can do um, to get Paralympians um, better funding, to get people with disability on boards as decision makers in employment. We still have so much, um, so far to go, and I've really loved still being involved and being able to sport, speak about these things because if they're not spoken about, um, they're not addressed and they're not um, front of mind. I love that you're, it, it's about making sure that when it comes to people with disabilities lives, that our voices are heard. Uh, and when it comes to sport, you little ripper is about amplifying as many voices of people with disability across this country as we possibly can. And before we speak to one of the absolute stars of the current Paralympic movement, we've got to get into our you little ripper moment. So Sarah, this is a part of the show where we jump into a sp- particular event that's taken place over the recent past that has you screaming, you little ripper. What is your you little ripper? moment for the year. My little Europa moment, Kurt, is the outstanding performances by Tim Hodge at the City World um, para, um, Swimming Series that took place in Feb. He won seven medals, three gold, two silver, one bronze in an amazing finish for Hodge on, on night three, breaking his own world record in the men's 200 IM shaving 0.5 off his world record um, and saving the best for last. And he um, beat his last um, world record from the World Para Swimming Championships last year. Um, yeah, that was definitely my my favourite Your Little Ripper moment. Uh, that is a country's hall all on its own. <laughs> it's cute. The United Republic of, of Tim Hodge. Uh, my Your Little Ripper moment is also from the uh, the, the Power World Championships. Uh, it is Jasmine Greenwood. Now, Jasmine Greenwood, she's uh, everyone at the You Little Ripper audience, you would all know Jasmine Greenwood because I claim a little bit of Jasmine Greenwood's success. I bask in her glory. <laughs> Jasmine was uh, the Kurt Fernley Scholarship holder a number of years ago, and I am, I am clinging to relevance here. <laughs> but Jasmine is... She is just an amazing young person, an incredible young athlete, and a, a, a talent for the foreseeable future for the Paralympic uh, movement. And whenever she gets a gold, I somehow try and get some of the some of the bright light, uh, some of the sun off that gold medal. So of course, I've brought Jasmine Green, uh, Green Greenwood up as my you little ripper moment. The best of the rest is, you know, it, it is one of those uh, one of the things in para sport that that is so close to being the you little ripper moment uh so we had to have the best of the rest sarah what is your best of the rest moment my best of the rest moment will be the para archery um and jonathan milne set both the australian and national records in the open compound and he's going from strength to strength and did absolutely incredibly so that would be my best from the rest how about you mine is 
back in the pool again, Rowan Crothers. We all remember Rowan Crothers from his tightrope act in Tokyo in 2020. Are we still calling it 2020 or can we actually acknowledge that it was Tokyo 2021 yet? Uh, but I, I, I digress. Rowan Crothers, another gold medal in the 100-metre freestyle race. The legend, the myth, the man himself is here. Rowan Crothers, welcome back to you, little ripper. Lucky to be here. How are you doing, guys? Mate, we're loving life here at You Little Ripper, as we always are, especially when we get to see you bring home gold medals. Um, I hear, I, can you confirm, yes or no, were you dancing on the tightrope of the lane rope as uh, you did in 2020? At World Series? No, I didn't, actually. Um, in full honesty, the World Series competition for me was kind of a benchmark on my preparation leading into national team trials and then world champs come July, August. So it was a really good chance to kind of see where I'm at competition wise. And I mean, winning obviously means I'm in pretty great form, uh, but there's still a long way to go leading into worlds. Um, thank you so much for coming on, Rowan. And just for our listeners that aren't too sure, can you explain what the City Para Swimming World Series is? So the World Series is a series of competitions that takes place across, uh, off the top of my head, it's like six or seven different countries around the sure. world. Um, so the Australian one happened in Melbourne in mid-February. Um, and there's also one that's coming up in Italy in about a week's time. Uh, I think it's like the 10th, 11th of March, something like that. Um, and they're just spread out kind of all over the place. Yeah, cool. So everybody, it's on the front of everybody's mind that 2020, 2024 is around the corner, Paris, the Paralympic Games. Um, what events are you working towards that will get you the result that you really, you, you, you're really you really driving for in Paris at the Paralympics? So my two main events are the 50 metres and the 100 metres freestyle. Um, everything is really gearing up towards that 100 meter freestyle at the moment now. So I won the 50 at Tokyo, but I only got silver in Tokyo. So, you know, I, I want to get two golds this time. That's the plan. Where do we follow you? What's on, what's on the following eight months that you little ripper audiences can tune out, tune in for to ensure that we get the most Rowan Crothers as we possibly can? So the next eight months is going to be national trials, which will be just after Easter weekend, I believe. Uh, that's at the Gold Coast, um, at the Gold Coast Aquatic Centre. And I believe that'll be streamed live. And then it'll be world championships from the 30th of July till the 6th of August. And that'll be on YouTube and on every good online news streaming platform. Amazing. Well, we'll all certainly be watching that and tuning in. Um, there are always young dolphin swimmers coming through the ranks. Who have you seen and who's one for us to watch? I think uh, there's a lot of really exciting swimmers that are up and coming. And I'm a little bit biased about this one in particular, but I trained with a girl by the name of Poppy Wilson. Uh, okay. She is an S10 swimmer, uh, just like me. And she also has cerebral palsy. And she's pretty new to the game, but... She's just getting faster and faster every time. She's really on track towards making the World Championships team this year. And I'm so keen to see how she goes at trials, hopefully Worlds, and then really onwards to Paris. Oh, amazing. Balance, we'll certainly watch Poppy. Balance is a massive thing for an athlete. To be able to get to a space where you are able to be the high-level uh, competitive athlete but also be able to engage outside of that so that you are, are around for the long term. Um, we're going to be talking about that over this year of uh, of you, Little Ripper, but what does balance look like for you? Uh, well, balance looks like to me I'm not very good at keeping my balance, for starters. Uh, I'm absolutely shocking. Uh, but I think balance just applies in so many different ways across not just making sure you have a good kind of work-life balance as an athlete. It's easy to just get so absorbed into sport and let that become who you are. I think I'm so much more than just a swimmer. Like, you know, I love all of my friends and my family. I love my video games, as anyone that follows me on Twitter knows. Uh, but outside of that, I think that something that you do as an athlete you have an audience and you have an audience of young people, of young people that want to be athletes someday or that look up to 
people with disability as role models. And I think a massive part of that kind of balance there is it's not just about doing the best you can to perform fast, but it's also about being the best role model that you can and trying to inspire other young people to whether they want to achieve their grandest dreams of competing at the Paralympics one day or if they just want to find friends and find a community and just take part of something bigger than themselves. Amazing. Now, Rowan, you've gone from strength to strength with your career. I've loved watching you um, throughout this this past um, many years now, actually. Was there ever a time where success felt impossible and how do you go about it and have you gone about it? So my one of my biggest hurdles, I've actually found time and again, the best moments in my career have been the hurdles because those have been the ones that have made me a much better athlete. Within Paralympic swimming, there's a reclassification process uh, that you have to go through. Um, and back in 2014, my swimming classification changed. So they decided based on these tests that I belonged in a different ability category compared to what I was in before. And that absolutely crushed me because I put so much of my personal self-worth and value on being a winner, on being a champion. And all of a sudden, when my category changed, I went from being rank one in the world to rank eight in the world. And I thought that I was never going to be successful again all of a sudden. But then I realized that having my self-worth placed on achievement, that doesn't make me more or less successful. But what I actually can control and what I can focus on and put my goals towards is just trying to get better at the process and the performance itself. So then I said, all right, no worries about any of that stuff. I'm just going to try and be the best athlete that I can be. And I'll judge my success based on how well I execute and how well I perform, not the time that comes up on the board at the end of the day. So then focusing on that means that now, whether I touch the wall first or touch the wall eighth, as long as I'm doing the best that I can, I'm going to be successful to me. The classification process can be pretty um, confronting and it's and it's unique to Paralympic sport because uh, classification allows that those with similar dysfunctional experience with disability uh, compete against themselves. Uh, it, it can be quite personal that you both have to share uh, your experience with disability but also a, a medical background and then you're assessed over an extended period of time. How much stress is it when you personally have to go through that process? The level of stress that you go through for classification is so difficult to put into words. I think it's because you have no control in that moment, in that situation. I remember when I first started on my Paralympic journey, I felt for the very first time ever, like I might not be disabled enough, which is kind of just like unbelievable to actually say out loud and think about out loud. Um, and I, I just think it's this kind of thing where at the end of the day, with this process, as stressful as it can be, because you have no control over it, it almost doesn't matter in a sense, because whatever comes up with a classification or otherwise, that's just what someone else thinks or what someone else's opinion is of your own ability. That may impact your category, it may impact your world rankings or whatever else. But ultimately, the things that you can control are how good of an athlete you are at your performance and at your process. You are certainly inspiring. And I, I absolutely love, I love watching you swim. I love that. But I actually just love listening to you speak as a person. Um, and you're such a well-respected team member. You're such a great guy. And you give so much for our up and coming swimmers. And that's very inspirational to watch. And I know my kids love watching you. Um, and you always have such important messages. And I think that there's so much more um like you're so much more than an athlete an incredible human and thank you so much for sharing um the time with us and i can't wait i reckon you can do it and i can't wait to watch sarah i love that we've been able to create this space within the paralympic movement where people have been able to share so much of themselves like there, there is no caution during that post race interview there is no you know i'm going to keep myself guarded there is a i'm going to share who i am i'm going to share what i believe in i'm going to make sure that this next generation of paralympic athletes get the benefit of not just the result or, or, or the gold medal they get the benefit of actually seeing the true real raw person on the other side of that 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the most important bit, really, that Australians see the raw um, talent, emotion, thinking behind um, our Paralympians. And I absolutely love seeing Ellie Cole marching in the Mardi Gras for part of um, World Pride Week. And um, a, a shout out to our LGBTIQA plus community. Say so we love you. And it's been really great to see um, the community spirit in the last couple of weeks. Was amazing to see Ellie Cole out there in the Mardi Gras, having uh, bringing the celebration that she has given to the Paralympic movement for so many years into a different part of our community. Uh, I would also like to thank the listeners of our podcast. We love para sport here, and we want to share how amazing it is with the rest of the world. But we need your help to do that. We need you all to tell your friends about what we are doing, and then you need to leave us an awesome review because I want to be invited back. <laughs> Only five stars. That's the only thing that we accept here at You Little Ripper. Uh, and we'll be back for more interviews with your favourite athletes. So make sure you follow us at You Little Ripper, wherever you get your podcast from. We'd like to say a big thank you to Toyota for supporting this episode of You Little Ripper. Oh, what a feeling. Thanks, Toyota. You Little Ripper!